What's up, YouTube? Uh, promise, I'm not too much of a hypocrite here. M maybe a little. Um, as you can see by the title of this video, shooting for 400 horsepower. And again, I, I kind of was originally and then kind of deviated from that, but I wanted to go over options you have for that. Um, and, and the reason I didn't go for it in the first place. Uh, you've probably, you may have seen my other videos about, you know, why your Subaru shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't shoot for, you know, over 350, 400 should be like your tops. My personal opinion, I know other people shoot for more than that, but, um, lightening the vehicle and just, I don't think it's going to last very long. Enough, but I won't elaborate too much on that. You can watch my other video on, I go into depth on that. This car right now, in its current state, um, is a uh, version 8 motor, but just think of it like a version 8 STI motor. Um, think of it like a, a GD STI motor, pretty much. We'll say that, I mean, it's only a 2 liter, but it has about 350 wheel horsepower, stock turbo, stock, stock VF 37. Uh, and if you're not familiar with that, it's just a twin scroll variation of the VF series, so what we get here in the United States. Um, and it, this is on E85. So we're in about 385 horsepower or 350 horsepower on E85. Um, and I wanted, I, to be honest, I, I was trying to get up to that 400 horsepower number just because I liked a power to weight of, you know, about 2,800 pounds and about 400 horsepower, wheel horsepower, for that, you know, like seven pounds per horsepower kind of number, which is kind of shooting for that. Uh, realized kind of quickly on the stock turbo, it's very difficult, to, very, very, even E85, to get over 350. It's kind of it's difficult to do that. Torque on the on the on the newer STIs or the 2.5 liter STIs, may, you may be able to leave a little bit more than that. But horsepower wise, that's what that's what I'm concerned with um, right now. So um, the reason I didn't go to 350 was because that would require a bigger turbo. Uh, I, the stock one. Uh, the reason I like staying with the VF series as like the biggest um, turbo is drivability, just lag, right? The bigger there are, there are compromises, right? There are slightly larger turbos that you're going to experience a little bit more lag, um, and kind of pushing that that curve um, a little bit to the right. But it, it, to me, it, it, it's not really worth it in the long run because you, the 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 extensive mods that you have to do, um, especially go. I, I'm twin scroll, so I'd have to go from twin twin scroll um, header uh, pipe to a single scroll. There are twin scroll options that are just really expensive. Um, so we're talking like the, the Blausch Dominator 1.5. That's a, probably the turbo where I would have gone. Um, was, you can get a twin scroll variation. It's about 2000 bucks, um, which is a lot of money uh, to be spending for, you know, maybe 50, 60 more horsepower. Um, and I didn't, and I heard pros and cons. Um, some people say the twin scroll as it's as a whole for the Subaru is just a gimmick. Um, single scroll, you're gonna you're not really gonna like experience too much le less lag with the twin scroll setup. That's kind of the point of it. Um, but people say it's really kind of a gimmick, and I don't. I mean, I don't really see like uh, compared to like uh, the the VF48 I was running on my old WRX motor. I definitely it's not as laggy. Granted, I have AV AVCS on this motor and a whole bunch of other things, but it is kind of. Um, uh, just a little, just a little bit of a gimmick. I, I would say maybe 100, 200 RPMs um, sooner in terms of boost than you would get if you had the same setup um, in a single scroll variation, on, or I had a single scroll variation on this car. So um, deviating a little bit, just talking about twin scroll stuff. We're talking about VF series turbos in general, though. So the VF series, we're talking about the VF48. Uh, I think the VF52 is what comes on the newer WRXs. Um, I, I think even now, and I saw this before, was this was an option that I looked at, was they have a high-performance VF48, um, which is a, a slightly larger uh, VF48 that uh, you can get a little bit more horsepower out of. But again, we're talking pretty expensive stuff, like $1,500 uh, brand new for that kind of thing. So it, for the amount of horsepower you'd be getting, it just seems like a lot of extra money um, and that's not something that I really, that's not the aspect of the car that I really want to dump a whole lot of money into is, is, um, just more and more and more power. So I wanted a little bit more, uh, but mainly on these VF series for you to get 350 on them, even on E85, you're pushing a shit ton of boost. Um, and it's just falling off at the top end. Like it's just trailing off. So, um, right now I think I'm running 23 pounds of boost on E85. Um, 
and then it hits 23 PSI at around 3,500, maybe 3,400. Um, and then it just tapers off the rest of the way towards the red line. The turbo just can't. Keep, it's probably like 16, 16 or 17 by the time I hit 8,000 RPMs. This revs out to 8,000. So it's, it's just steadily decreasing the entire way. So um, obviously if you can hold more PSI throughout the rev range, you're going to get more power throughout the rev range. Um, so that was a big thing for me was just a little bit more power. And even if I don't get more power, I can, I can conservatively tune it to get the same amount of power, but have a more efficient, um, kind of band, if you will, as opposed to it spiking, not, it's not spiking, but I mean, it kind of feels almost like it is to 350 and then kind of tapering off or rather just hold that the entire time. Um, so I have, I have one turbo behind, a. <laughs> A curtain here if you will and then what's next to me here is this is a single school variation a, kind of the same thing you'd find looks like a generic VF series um, so this is a VF 30 this is a single scroll it's kind of a spare turbo I have laying around and I just have it here kind of for comparison um, the turbo underneath I'll show in a sec but the one I have on the car is a VF 37 again twin scroll turbo VF 30 and VF 37 pretty much the same uh, like same size compressor housing, everything's pretty much identical. Um, the only difference is again the exhaust side uh, twin scroll setup. So it takes in two pipes or two holes, if you will, as opposed to one. Um, but the lag is 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 pretty much the same. Um, and when we say lag, that was the again the big reason why I didn't want to get it if I didn't deviate before was a the money and b lag is like I hate it. Like obviously most people do. I should have got a V8, I guess. But um, joking. The uh, lag is, I mean, there's, there's, there's two kinds of ways to think about it. I mean, because we use lag, we just throw that term around. Lag meaning how long it takes the turbo to spool up. Obviously, a larger turbo is going to take a little bit longer to spool up um, and, you know, higher in the rev range. So you take, you know, 3,400 get a bigger turbo. Some of those twin scroll variants that I talked about, like the Blausch, some people don't see it until 4, 4, 2, 4, 5. Uh, 4.5 thousand rpms before you're really hitting peak boost which again is, is a large that's like you're losing one whole rpm there it's it's but also just even if you're in that range like let's say you're sitting at 5,000 rpms and you mash the throttle there's that lag incorporated there as well because you're spooling up a bigger turbo even though you're in it's it's kind of its threshold its range that it should be in there's still that 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 not that instantaneous feeling because it being a larger turbo obviously takes a little bit longer to spool up. Um, so I wanted to keep it smaller. Uh, obviously you can go bigger. I don't suggest it, but um, there is other options out there. Great options, and I'm about to show you one. Uh, first we'll look at the VF30 here. Again, pretty generic. It probably looks similar to anyone else's uh, VF48, which is probably the most common turbo that I'm gonna show. It's underneath underneath that little guy right there. Um, you can see the, the, uh, the actual wheel here six blade um, I got most of it taped up um, but this turbo is in pretty good shape not a lot of uh, play or anything like that you can see all around just single scroll you can tell by the bottom here obviously it's taped but there's only one hole here um, and what we have underneath the curtain is what I spent uh, about $700 on so definitely cheaper um, kind of brand new but it, $200 was spent just to buy um, what I needed to uh, to send off. So basically what happened was, again, VF37 on the car right now. I found a VF37, uh, which is the same turbo I have, uh, for sale on uh, Facebook Marketplace for very cheap, for $200. Um, it was in decent shape, but I didn't care really how good of a shape, how good shape it was in. I really just needed the housing. And what we did was we sent this off to... Uh, Oh, there's some, there's some watches here. To Pavel Racing Engines. What we did here, you can see there's no real size variation here. Let me pull this closer. There's no real size deviation here. You can see the, the actual size. Nothing changed. Um, the only thing that you will notice is is this, this wheel here, right? So this wheel is now a nine blade. Um, this is a G25. Uh, 550 wheel. So this is a Garrett 550 wheel. I didn't know this was possible, and that's kind of why I'm making this video. Um, 
that you can fit these wheels in a VF series turbo. What that means is, typically this wheel is associated with a turbo, a Garrett turbo, with a much larger housing. Um, longer to spool up, much longer. Not a lot, but definitely longer than this, right? So there, uh, at Pavel Racing is able to take this wheel and put it into this uh, turbo. And with that, on the 85, most people are seeing around or above um, 400 wheel horsepower. So with a VF series turbo, um, you're seeing over 400 wheel horsepower on the 85. Or if I just wanted to stay with 93 or 92, I could have the same amount of power that I have now on E85. Um, the benefits to the G, the G25 550 wheel, he calls it the G25 500 upgrade, but it's a 550 wheel. Um, the benefits to this wheel are, again, it, uh, all of the horsepower benefits, none of the lag, like none of the lag that you would experience with a larger turbo, and it holds boost longer. So basically, oh, peak boost. So basically, you have that trail-off that we talked about. I peak out at 23 on E85, and then taper down to 16 or 17. This is going to prevent that. This is going to make it so I don't have to. Um, I can hold that 20, probably 20 pounds of boost. We'll have to see. Again, I'm going to put it on um, probably in about a, a week or so, and then get it retuned. But uh, I wanted, I've wanted. i heard that you can hold 20 pounds of boost easily to redline, if not more. Um, so... You're, you're, it's basically taking this, using it as an example, obviously it's not the one on the car, this inefficient, more inefficient turbo, not crap turbo by any means, but more inefficient turbo that you could tell is just taking a beating, um, if it can only like go to 16 PSI by redline, and replacing it with that. Um, this is a $500 upgrade, so basically what you would do is, like I said, I bought a used turbo, um, and then I didn't even look at it because I didn't care. I knew it was going to be replaced. I didn't care about shaft play or anything like that. Sent it immediately off to, to uh, Pavel um, uh, Racing in, in Illinois. Um, and it was $500 plus the shipping, which was like 50 bucks or something like that. Um, and he ceramic coated the entire thing. This thing is beautiful. Ceramic coated it. So you can see it's ceramic coated. Um, and treated, paint, painted the uh, the the accessories black, and, and then obviously upgraded the wheel, and um, eliminated the need um, for RTV in this. Uh, so the the way that the stock one's set up, the the connection between these two housings, there's RTV inside, which basically it's another failure point that um, he has eliminated um, with this turbo. Uh, I did extensive research on this. I don't know, or I haven't seen a lot of people um, referencing this upgrade, um, and I think it's because it's just not that well known. I, I don't, I don't, I don't see. I mean, obviously, when I put it on, I'll have more uh, to say about it after that. But I don't see the downside to it. Uh, it's cheaper, much cheaper, five hundred dollars, four hundred wheel horsepower is again the tops of this turbo. So if you're maxing it out, four hundred, right? So, I mean, you don't need to do that. You know that it has that capability, though. Or you can stay around the 350 range and be extremely efficient, right? Extremely efficient. Um, and, and just kind of not just bury the turbo, um, <laughs> just maxing it out the entire time. So, it, it's cheap. Uh, it's it's Obviously, it's, it's in a new state. It's completely rebuilt. Um, obviously, he checks everything, balances everything um, for $500. I think there's an option too. I should have. I was going to do it. I normally do everything myself. I think there is an option that he sells just the wheel and everything you would need to do this yourself for two hundred dollars, um, and he would ship that to you, and then you put it together yourself. Turbo things like that, like um, machining um, or just checking uh, proper things and balancing, especially balancing a turbo. That's something that I didn't want to really risk. Um, that's like. Uh, machining your own heads kind of thing. That's something that I wouldn't do. Some people are okay machining their own heads. That's not something that I would I would do. Um, this is kind of one of those things that I, I would kind of send off. So $500, if you, if you already have the turbo, 500 bucks and 400 wheel horsepower. If you don't have the 85, then 350, 360, um, which is nuts. I mean, that's just crazy to me because the amount of money that you would have to spend, I've seen a lot of people get like 20 Gs, Cobb 20 Gs, um, the, the Blausch 1.5, like obviously it's depending on the dyno, but they're getting the kind of horsepower numbers that this is seeing and you're paying like 
quadruple the amount of money. Um, and you're experiencing, let's be honest, a shit ton more lag, a lot more lag. And that's the biggest thing for me. It's, it, the more lag, it's just not, it's just not fun. It just, obviously it's not fun. Everyone will say like, when my turbo comes in, it's like a freight train. Like that's not, uh, A, that's less controllable as well too, for it to just be this on off switch. Um, obviously all turbos are kind of like that, but I mean, a bigger one is just more like, um, you have this really steep curve where all the power is in this one little small area as opposed to it, it gradually progressing on its way up and achieving the same amount of power. Um, so th this is more for me. This is more my speed, I think. I, again, I did talk in previous videos about um, staying around the 350-400 wheel horsepower range. I'm not really big on just maxing out power. This is going to be the end of it unless something happens with this and it and you know it doesn't work for some reason but 400 is where i'm gonna where i'm gonna stop like this is it's way it's already really fast right now um you can watch my other videos i think i, I did like a a, a a draggy um on this this thing it on the draggy it did 4.2 0 to 60 in like a, a 12 three quarter but uh, that was like me kind of babying it on the shifts um I, like it was a 4.2 on the 0 to 60 and i shifted into third um, on this to get to 60, I didn't need to, uh, that alone could have saved me like half a second. So, I mean, it's a zero to 60 is like a three, seven for this car. It's, it's pretty low. And then the, I could easily break right now it's current state into the 11s, um, w with, with how it is. I'm just talking about quarter mile numbers. Um, cause that's kind of what people relate when you talk about just horsepower numbers, dynos are very like a lot. So if you talk about it, a quarter mile time, you're not, that's not really a huge variance like a dyno is. When someone says I have 400 horsepower on a dyno jet as opposed to a Mustang dyno and uh, the, everything in between um, based off the settings, it, it, I, I don't really care for those numbers. Um, I'm telling you what it has right now and how we're only going to go up from there. Um, so get 350 to 400, what is that? Like a, like a 12%, a 15% increase in power? Um, for $500, uh, pretty sweet deal. Uh, I'm already set up fuel wise, 1300 CC injectors, uh, 340 fuel pump. I have, I have enough to take me to 400, uh, probably enough to take me to about 450 safely. After that, it'd be crazy, but I'm not going to 450. I'm just, I, I obviously overshot it. Um, so I would never run out of injector or fuel. Um, and obviously it's speed density. So I, I, I don't have to worry about maxing out the math sensor or anything like that. Um, but here she is again in all of her glory. Uh, I know it's probably drug on, but again, just a beautiful looking turbo, beautiful wheel. Um, I will post a link in the um, description of uh, to uh, Pavel Racing's website. Um, he's not sponsoring me or anything. <laughs> I, I wish he was, um, but... It's just a, I, he's a really cool guy, um, answered all of my questions. I, I was very intrigued by this and wanted to know everything I could. Sent me dyno plots and uh, of other people who have done um, VF series upgrades, that is G25 upgrade, um, and really kind of went through, I ran through the paces and uh, he, he came back, he had an answer for everything. Very knowledgeable guy. And you can do research on his site and on his reviews. He doesn't just do turbo stuff. He, he, he like, his machines builds motors, does all kinds of stuff. So um, we'll have another video uh, where I put this on. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have an install video because there's so many turbo install videos. I don't know if I need to do one of those. It's a pretty quick install, probably like 10 volts. Um, it's not really a huge deal to install. Probably like, I, if I go slow, two hours? Um, should be like an hour uh, to install a turbo. Not really that big of a deal. Um, but then I'm going to get tuned by Shinji Tuning, which, which I, who I used before in the previous, in this previous tune, this flex tune. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there, but, uh, appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. You know, I kind of rambled and went, uh, went off the rails in some cases, tried to keep it on point. Um, and I would appreciate you subscribing. Thank you.